Okay, real quick, the thinner seal from all balls seems to be the one to go with. And there was no way really to put the axle in there or the axle hub in there and see which one would be different. So I went garbage picking and I pulled out the old seal and this matches the East Lake one a little better. It's thicker. So I'm going to go with the thinner all balls one. It moves the, the ceiling surface. I also grabbed the old cage. I thought I should compare and make sure they're the same. And they are, but this one is certainly better made. Uh, it's just, you can't get the tops off of it. They're kind of stuck on there. Maybe originally you could. I mean, it is three pieces, but the springs don't really feel much better than the ones on that cheaper part, but this thing's just too beat up. There's a lot of wear on the ends of them, so I had a little bit of temptation to clean this and use it. I'm not gonna. Uh, but one thing I want to point out with the seals, when you put them in, there's no there's no recess here in the in the boss. It's just, they gotta just sit level when you drive them in. There's nothing to stop them, so just use a seal driver, of course, that's a lot bigger than your seal, and that'll drop them in there even. I also determined it was easy with the video that the uh, this axle hub goes in the bigger part of the case, the part with the bushing in it. So let me get these seals in and we'll continue on. All right, I got the pinion bearing in, and the, the pinion rather. Got the O-ring, I put grease on it, of course. A little bit of grease on the seal. I don't look the torque specs up for this yet, but I will in a minute. Let me get that torque down. I got this bearing in. These basically just fall in it, need a little persuasion, but don't kill it because you don't want to knock your seal out the other side. I don't know, it looks like the outer part of that seal could maybe ride a little bit better on the axle there. So maybe if I try to drive these in a little bit more, I think I'm going to do that. Because it's barely touching the outside of that lip. So let me push that in a little more and uh, try to get it to sit square anyway. I'll fix that up in a second here. See if that looks any better. Yeah, I'd say that'll work. It's in there square. I'm gonna get my depth gauge and just make sure that's eyeballing that it looks good. But I just want to make sure. Ooh. Seems good. Definitely a nicer fit than it was. Way nicer. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I'm leave it like that. Okay, so I got the pinion in, the seal. Uh, one thing I'll note, I should have marked this plate before I took it off. There's no way to tell which way it goes. I'll look at the video. So, make it easier on yourself if you're doing it, just mark the plate. You don't have to go back and look. Not that it was a big deal. I also determined that this part goes in the bigger part of the case. Uh, another issue I had, I had to drive the seals in a little bit lower. And I remember from the factory, they were sticking up just a little bit. They were not sticking up, but they were flush right here. I don't know if you could see that. And uh, they didn't seal really well. I mean, the oil, the spring load at lip side, or the spring side with the, and the inside, the oil side of the seal was, was fine, but not that part there. So I had to drive that one in a little bit to get it right. And 
That one you gotta watch, because there's nothing on the inside to indicate other than eyeballing it to see if it's level. I have a depth gauge that I can check it out when it's all right. But this side's kind of got a little, little bevel there. I don't know if you can see it. So if you just push it to the bottom, lower part of this bevel, you're all right. And then it's recessed just enough. So that was the only issue with the seals. Um, so I kind of just pre-lubed everything, brushed a little oil on it. Everything feels pretty good. Um, so I'm going to continue on here. Next thing going here is the hub goes in first. The axle hub goes in first, minus the debris. And uh, then the shim, snap ring, or I'm sorry, then the armature, shim, and the snap ring go back on there. So I'm going to do that, and it'll only take me a second. I'm not going to record it. I'll just show the picture when it's done. Okay, we're on to the final assembly. As Norm Abrams used to say, assembly. Uh, two things I just want to point out. Got a little too much oil down there in that axle hub hole where the bushing is where it mates with this side of the axle hub. So you get a little hydraulic pressure in there. It doesn't go together really easy. I found that out just playing with it on the bench. I haven't tried to put it together. I'm probably going to have to put a little grease on the Torrington and holding that on there because this drops in from the top and I can't flip it the other way because then the ring gear and everything's going to fall out. And the same thing with this thrust pushing that goes on there, a little bit of grease and I'm sure that'll hold it on no problem. Uh, and of course the O-ring, just a light coat of grease. Everything was pretty straightforward to put together. Lubed everything up with the brushing a little bit of that demand drive fluid on there. Still haven't looked up the torque spec. I'm gonna do that next, but everything went together nice. I, I honestly think it's gonna work. How long it'll last with those parts, I don't know. I have a good feeling about it though. <laughs> Only time will tell. So let me get this case together. I'm gonna fill it with oil, and then we'll. Uh, hopefully, my daughter will be home by then, Allison, and uh, we'll get this thing back in the back in the ATV and take it for a ride. All right, so I'm putting this, this together. One more thing. Obviously, it's much easier to set it up like this rather than trying to drop this on top of it like I was originally going to do. I didn't think it would stand up, but it does. It would have held on there with the grease. You should kind of clock this thing. Just move one of these. This is where the, the tooth of the armature goes in there. So just at least get them close. Because when you start putting it together, it's really hard to see what's going on. Um... This thing's pretty tough. I mean, you have to beat it down with a hammer to, to bend it and ruin it. But just try to... I've got one pointing straight up, another one here. They're both at about about 12 o'clock. So I think I won't have any trouble, but just a little advice. All right, plan B. That didn't work out too well. They fit in there pretty tight. I don't want to take any chances, so it was easy. I just pulled the cage out a little bit, and I'll be able to see when I'm putting it together. And that solves that problem. The good news is Allie's home, so now we have help. I checked these seals with my depth gauge, and they were good. One side was up a little bit. We were able to man manage to push it down, but uh, that took care of everything. So now the, lip, the lips of the seal, both the inner and the outer, um, aren't riding on the part that was a little bit grooved out. So we're just going to torque this down. It's 14 foot-pounds, so it's 168 inch-pounds. And, uh, well, that goes for all. we got seven up here and four here, but it wouldn't be a project unless we didn't lose a bolt and we lost one. So we'll just have to find a replacement. We looked everywhere there was to look, including the parts washer. So we're gonna get these torqued down and then I'm gonna put a little heat shrink on these wires, get it filled with oil, and we're gonna put it back in the quad and take it for a ride. It'll probably be dark by then, but we'll have a video. So that's it, it's all done. Works really well, no problems. Spoiled by power steering, I forgot how hard this thing was to steer. But it's all fixed up. Hope the repair lasts with those parts I used. We'll see.